What is up, Flavor Family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock some tasty, beefy keto meal prepping like a boss. This meal prep recipe is delicious because the meatloaf is stuffed with cheese and prosciutto. The vegetables are funky and delicious, and you know what? Everything is really easy to make, and the volume of the flavor is dialed to 11. So let's rock it, y'all. Beefy meatloaf loaded with vegetables, provolone cheese, and prosciutto, topped with keto ketchup and baked in the oven until nice and golden and served with broccolini and Japanese eggplant topped with crispy shallots, garlic, and mustard seeds. So here's the deal, y'all. If you love healthy, delicious meal prep and that actually has a ton of flavor, click that old subscribe button because we are rocking out new videos every Friday morning on my channel and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, before we get to the beef, let's push that aside and focus on the vegetation. So in the bowl, I have half a medium-sized onion and one green bell pepper. I have a couple rules about vegetables that go into meatloaf. Art, do you like your veggies cooked before they go in the meatloaf or raw? The former. Raw. Cooked. Oh. <laughs> cooked. Clearly, uh, I know English language. <laughs> Me too, but first I'm gonna drizzle in a couple teaspoons of avocado oil. Add my veggies, along with a half a teaspoon of salt, and a few cracks of black pepper. And yes, we want to cook our vegetables first because veggies are loaded with water. Water will sog down the meatloaf and make it watery if you don't cook it. Now, the one time I did not cook my vegetables is when I was on Cutthroat Kitchen a little while ago, and guess what? I went home. So, I don't have any sabotages or time constraints this time, so I will take the time to saute that down. And speaking of thyme, let's get a little bit of dried herbage in there in the form of half a teaspoon of dried thyme. And then give that a mix up. And I'm gonna let those cook for a good 10 to 14 minutes and I'm gonna give it a hard start, a head start over the garlic. Art, why am I not adding the garlic right now? I don't want it to burn. Garlic burns easily and it's very bitter. So I'm gonna push that aside and then bring the beef to the star of the center here. This is two pounds of 85% ground beef, meaning it's 85% beef, 15% fat. If you can find 80-20, it's even juicier and has more flavor, but this is all I can find. To that, I'm gonna add some binder in the form of two eggs. So go ahead and crack two eggs and add them to the beef. And then I wanna get a little salty, nutty cheese action in there, so Parmesan or Pecorino would be lovely. And I love doing this with a microplaner because look at this. It creates the most fine snow shower of cheese ever. And I need about a quarter cup total, but if you're gonna use a regular box grater with the big holes, just measure it. Then I have to season this bad boy with a good teaspoon of kosher salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Ooh, a couple more grinds. You like it a pepper. <laughs> Trivia, what was that from? You like it a black pepper, right? Eh? Leave a comment. If you know that one, Art and I will be very, very impressed. All right, before I get all medieval and mix that with my hands, I'm gonna let this cook down. I think we could add the garlic right now. So let's go ahead and add three cloves of garlic that I finely minced. The veggies still have a good like eight minutes left. In the meantime, this recipe is down below in the description box as always, but it lives on the new flavecity.com. If you haven't heard me say it before, Desi and I spent three months building this love baby of a blog and it's a phenomenal user experience, but I need your help. Every recipe on there can be rated and reviewed. So if you go to the website and see a recipe that you've made, share it, leave a review, and let me know what you think of the layout. All right, so it's been a good 15 minutes, you guys, but look inside the pan. See the vegetables? That's what you want. They really sweated down. They're almost soft and jammy, and they released all of their moisture. Like I said, if I had time on TV on Cutthroat Kitchen, I would have won me some money, but alas, I went home with good memories, but no money. All right, I'm gonna add this directly to the beef art. Is it okay that the vegetables are hot and I'm adding them to beef? I'll say yes. Why is that? You're all cooking at the same time really soon in here. Exactly, so don't worry about uh, cross-contamination or bacteria breeding because we're cooking it in like five minutes. If you were gonna form the meatloaf mixture and then wait a good 30 minutes, you'd have to let the vegetables cool down. All right, and then to start mixing it, I'm gonna use the spoon because the veggies are hot, and then I'll de-bling and I'll switch to my hands. All right, so make sure you incorporate everything super duper well. Hey, Art, right, come here for a sec. Uh, I have to spread this flat and then stuff it with prosciutto and cheese, but I don't trust my uh, clumsy paws for that. How about you? You want to help? Uh, pretty much the same deal here. Uh, more clumsy paw syndrome. What do you, what do you suggest? Desi! Job for Desi. Come on over, babe. All right, out of the way. Let's do this 
the right way. <laughs> All right, what you got? You got some parchment paper here. Okay. Let's dump the meat on it. All right. These close-ups don't happen magically. So I'm going to evenly spread this mixture into a nine by 10 rectangle shape. Because why, babe? Because we're gonna roll it. <laughs> so it's gonna be stuffed with the prosciutto, stuffed with the provolone, roll it up, and then pop it in the meatloaf tin. And then go ahead and shingle down a layer of prosciutto. You can also use ham for this, or you can just skip this step. And then shingle down a layer of provolone cheese, or feel free to use Munster or mozzarella or Swiss. And then go ahead and roll up the meatloaf into a log. Make sure it's nice and tight and make sure everything's uniform. And then pinch off the sides, make sure the ends are closed, and then go ahead and drop it into a meatloaf tin. All right, that looks good. Now, the ketchup glaze art, check this out. I found keto ketchup at the store. Hey, I'll give this brand some love. It has no sugar. It's really good quality. Tomatoes, spices, and balsamic vinegar. You don't need sugar in ketchup. So many ketchups is just loaded with sugar. It's disgusting. So I'm gonna pour a healthy amount of it on the top of this meatloaf here. And then Desi, if you can smooth it out. All right, babe. Most meatloaves are kind of sweet because of yeah, the glaze. Yeah, totally. All right, guys, oven is preheating at 350 degrees. I'm gonna pop this guy in here for about an hour and 15 minutes until the internal temperature hits 155 degrees. All right, my friends, while the meatloaf is in the oven doing its thing, we can get going on this funky little side dish that I kinda just made up recently. As if the kitchen weren't hot enough already. It's 90 degrees outside. We got the oven going to 350. <laughs> Let's boil a pot of water, why not? The reason why we have to do that is I have to blanch the broccolini very quickly. This is broccolini, AKA baby broccoli. It's very tender and has nice long stems that are very pleasant to eat. Before I plunge that in the old water, let's put a healthy pinch of salt. All right, why am I salting my water? Your broccolini doesn't come seasoned. It doesn't come seasoned, even better answer than I expected. And then drops the brocks right in. And I want that to go for maybe about two to three minutes. So I'm gonna put it back yonder. All right, you can tell me when that time has been up. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna grab a nonstick pan, whack that over medium high heat, add a good drizzle of avocado oil, say about two tablespoons. And I have some shallots here, some garlic, and some mustard seeds. So basically I wanna fry my aromatics in that oil, get them nice and crispy, let them infuse that olive oil with all their yummy goodness. We'll pull them out and use them for crunchy bits later on because what about Team Crunch? Did you say last week? If you're not in Team Crunch, you're not in our bunch. I could not have said it any better than myself. First, let's put about a teaspoon of mustard seeds in there, and then finally slice two shallots, or if you're in England, shallot. And then do the same thing with three to four cloves of garlic. And so once those go in the pan, kind of tilt the pan to the side a little bit. That way it can do a shallow fry, and you're just trying to get some golden brown color on the veggies. That way they infuse the oil with all their goodness. All right, so this is what you want it to look like, you guys. See how it's getting nice and golden? I'm gonna give that about 30 seconds more and then yank it. Because it goes from golden brown and crispy to burnt in like 20 seconds. Trust me, I've done it many more times. All right, now I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium for right now, put my crunchy bits on the side. I did drain my broccolini. I'm gonna give that a rough chop along with, we haven't made this on my channel, but Japanese eggplant. It is so tender and delicious. First, let's cut up the broccoli. I'm going to leave the florets in big chunks like that. And then for the stalks, I'm just gonna slice them pretty fine. That way they cook all the way through in the pan. We wanna eat all of that nutritious goodness for the Japanese eggplant. Let's have it. I was just asking me, is it less bitter than a regular? Um, what's it called again? Uh, Eggplant, thank you. Yes, look inside, it has very, very few seeds. Seeds are what makes eggplant bitter, which is why sometimes you have to put a lot of salt on them and let them drain out that moisture. That's the bitter flavor. I'm gonna have them, have them again, and just cut them into large bite-sized pieces. I think the heat is finally getting to me. I can't even remember the name of the eggplant that I just <laughs> started talking about a minute ago. And then add all of the eggplant and the broccolini. Okay, give that a mix. Crank up the heat to medium high. This will cook for about six minutes, seven minutes. Trivia for the day. Do I wanna salt this now, as soon as the veggies go in the pan, or do I wanna wait until after they cook to salt it? Pause the video, answer now. And for the answer, Art. Later. Because? 
You want it to caramelize. Exactly, salt pulls out moisture. If I salt the veggies now, water will come out and there's no way they're gonna get nice color on there. All right, homies, it's been about 10 minutes. I just salted it before we turn the camera back on here and that is what you want the food to look like. Take a peek at that art. See the nice color on the eggplant? I'm gonna kill the heat on the pan. Remember, we still have these beautiful crispy bits here I'm gonna garnish over later on, but we haven't done any zesting in this video, so I think a little bit of lemon zest in the pan is gonna wake up the flavor. Oh, I love that. Art, do you smell that as soon as the zest goes in there? My nose isn't working. <laughs> no, yeah. Not yet, right, yeah. This is done. The meatloaf is done. Let's yank it out and finally plate this dish because I'm hungry. All right, you guys, I let the meatloaf rest for a good 30 minutes, actually, because I don't want the hot cheese to ooze everywhere. Dusty smelled the meatloaf as soon as I got it out. I have this probe thermometer that I put in the middle because I want to pull the ground beef at exactly 155 degrees, and then it carries over to 160. Anything beyond that, it starts getting dry. So if you don't have one of these, I'll put a link down in the description box. I use it for almost every cut of protein. Now let's transfer it to this cutting board here. Desi, I'm gonna pick up the loaf. You get rid of the parchment. Well, dude, this thing weighs like five pounds. Ooh, I can't hold it anymore. And then the moment we've all been waiting for, What's this sucker gonna look like inside? Let's see. Gonna cut it right in the middle, baby? Yeah, right through the heart, baby. <laughs> I can't see it yet, but Art is making good noises, so let me see. Ooh la la is right, dude. Look at that. You can see the prosciutto and that cheese kind of like marbled in that pinwheel of delicious goodness. All right, let's play this dish. Let's cut two pieces of the meatloaf. Ooh, look at the cheese in that one. That one's nice. Put that down on a plate and then scoop in a healthy amount of the eggplant and the broccoli. And don't forget to top it off with some of the crispy shallots, mustard seeds, and garlic. And there it is, y'all. Low carb, beefy, prosciutto and cheese stuffed meatloaf with crispy veggies on the side. I think we've earned a bite already, Desi. What do you think? Yeah, babe, I've right. been waiting for this all day. <laughs> We've earned it, dude. It's 110 degrees in the kitchen. Put that plate down so we can dig in. Right. I gotta try it by the vegetables. Mmm, nice flavor, babe. Mmm, -hmm. mm, nice. I like it. Yeah, so meatloaf is super duper juicy, but then you get pockets of cheese, pockets of salty prosciutto, and that glaze on top has a nice kind of sweet acidity. Those vegetables are great. I mean, you have to pair a meatloaf with a veggie. Why not have something funky and new like blister Japanese eggplant and broccolini with crunchy little bits on the top? All right, that's it, you guys. The recipe is down below in the description box along with the storage, heating, macros, all that good stuff. Make sure you share this video. Spread the Flav City love across the interweb. If you want to see two more videos, where can they find them, Art? The website. And below us right now. Right now. But we will see you next week. Until then, hashtag... Keep on cooking mad love. Peace, guys.